This video is called the veins of the head and upper limb. We're going to start by drawing a very simple heart. But because we're talking about venous blood, we're going to start from the periphery and follow the path of the veins back towards the heart the same way that blood would flow. In the forearm, we'll start with the ulnar vein and the radial vein, which unite to form the brachial vein. The brachial vein will then become the axillary vein and eventually the subclavian vein as you reach the root of the neck. We'll go ahead and draw the same thing on this side. Now, each of the subclavian veins is going to be joined by the main vein draining the inside of the skull, and this is the internal jugular vein. When those veins join, they will form right and left brachiocephalic veins. Right and left brachiocephalic veins will unite to form the superior vena cava, which drains back to the right atrium. Now, if you have an internal jugular vein, safe to assume you have an external jugular vein, and those can be added to the diagram here. You have another set of veins that drain the upper limb, and these are superficial veins. They lie just under the skin. So here we have one that is found on the lateral side of the upper limb, joining in just as the axillary vein becomes the subclavian vein, and that is called the cephalic vein. On the medial side, we have its counterpart, joining in with the brachial vein to actually form the axillary vein, and this is the basilic vein. These two are connected by an anastomosis across the cubital fossa that we call the median cubital vein. And of course, the pattern repeats on the other side of the body.